I feel guilty for ending my 10-year marriage. I'm the one who's supposed to be at fault for ending my 10-year marriage. This is my story. I got married in 2011 to 2012, but from the start, my husband had a friend named Lupita. Lupita would send him messages like, hello, my love and hello. Baby, my husband would respond in the same way. It's worth noting that I talked to him more often when I was pregnant, which is strange because my pregnancies weren't happy times for me. She knew exactly when he was with me, and it was clear he was keeping her updated on his whereabouts. I saw many strange messages they exchanged, but I didn't say anything and tried to be patient. As time passed, my kids grew closer to him, and their friendship continued. All I asked was for him to respect me, since no friend had ever spoken to me in such a way. I asked him multiple times to stop talking to her like that, but he just said, she's my friend, whether you like it or not, he even told me that I should support him, that I encouraged him to start his own business, and that I helped him day and night with his work. While I was with him, I took care of our children and managed their school responsibilities. We worked at night, and I didn't receive any payment for my work I was just helping out. I asked him to support me in pursuing my own education, and he said, just give me one more year, and I'll help you. I also asked him to start a business, but he said, give me one more year. I was exhausted, sleeping only three to four hours a day, and his response was always the same just one more year as time went on. People involved with the business would comment to me, they're your boyfriends, your lovers, you must be cheating on him but that was never true. I always treated him with respect. I gave him my youth and the best years of my life. We were together 24 slash seven, but eventually I reached a breaking point. I couldn't even go shopping alone without being accused of cheating. There are many more details, but the point is I never disrespected him or insulted him like he did to me. One day I got fed up with him yelling at me at work and insulting me over everything. So I decided to leave him. For two months, he begged me to come back, but I just wanted him to take the time to appreciate me. I always took care of him, our home, our kids, and our business. But he left me for the first woman who came along. We had an agreement to support our children financially, but he stopped paying once he claimed that one of the kids wasn't his. I filed a lawsuit for financial support and divorce. The woman he left me for eventually left him too, likely due to her own reasons. I was unhappy that my kids had lived with her especially since she claimed that he had said not all of our kids were his. She even went so far as to falsely accuse one of my kids of abuse, which was not true. I sat down with my kids and talked to them about it. I know my children and what they're capable of. Time went by, and he told me again that he loved me and was going to change, but I didn't go back to him. I wanted to see if he had really changed for good. However, I found out that he was getting involved with women at work. He denied it like he always does when he's caught doing something wrong. It's worth noting that when he's with someone new, he treats my children poorly and neglects his responsibilities. He says he doesn't want to provide financial support, but the truth is, he never allowed me to work independently or receive my own money. He always had to ask me for everything, and he never paid me for my work. Two months ago, he was crying again, promising to change, but I knew he was in a relationship with a girl much younger than him about 20 years younger. He offered to leave her if I took him back, but I refused. I knew he had many girlfriends during our separation. He even sent me inappropriate messages and tried to touch me inappropriately. Now, he's asking to be my lover, but of course I didn't accept. We've been separated for almost two years now. I've always told him, as long as you don't mistreat my children, neither you nor your partner, I won't say anything bad about you, but I warned him, if you touch them. You'll face the consequences our divorce is still not finalized because he keeps delaying it. He only wants to give a minimal amount of money, which is a fraction of what he earns weekly less than 10% of his income. I have my own small business, and thankfully, it's doing well. But I continue to fight for what my children deserve. It's worth noting that he took my cars and properties, showing no concern for whether our children have enough food or if I have a vehicle to get around. Now, he wants to finalize the divorce, and I suspect his new partner might be pregnant. But that's not my concern, as the children aren't to blame for anything. Am I the villain for fighting for what's rightfully mine? Am I wrong for taking legal action against him? Am I wrong for prioritizing my children's well-being? It's worth noting that I've been in a relationship for six months now with a man who has supported and encouraged me in my business. He tells me, you can do it, and you're not alone. He's earned the title of father in my children's eyes 
as they love him dearly and call him daddy. My new partner has been helping me with essential things for my children, like clothes and necessities, because their biological father always claims he doesn't have money, despite earning over $10,000 a week. I know he has the means, but he chooses not to provide. I've also discovered that he's told his new partner that everything belongs to her, but he's ignoring the fact that legally, 50% of everything belongs to me. Honestly, I'm not bothered that he's in a new relationship, it's just one of many since our separation. What concerns me is that she's so young and he'll likely do to her what he did to me, take away her freedom, crush her dreams, and stifle her goals. I'm sure of this because my children share details with me and I can see it already happening. I want to warn her, but I don't know how to tell her not to be foolish and waste her potential. She's likely blinded by his wealth and material possessions. Unaware of the toxic pattern he's repeating. Story 2 Was I wrong to tell my neighbor to grow up and get over it when he complained about the color I painted my house? He didn't like the color, but I told him to get a life and stop worrying about something that doesn't matter. I bought a house in a neighborhood that doesn't have a homeowners association hey, GHN. I wanted the freedom to make my house truly mine, including choosing the colors I like. I deliberately picked a neighborhood with houses that already have bold and fun colors, instead of the usual boring earth tones. I wanted my home to stand out and reflect my personality. After waiting for a while, I finally got the chance to repaint my house. I chose a soft, peachy color as the main shade and added accents of sage, blue, and different shades of pink, from light to dark. I wanted a fun and colorful look without going overboard. If you search online for color palette blue sage peach, you'll get an idea of the combination I went for. My neighbor Paul really dislikes the new color of my house and has been complaining nonstop since we started painting. He's also made it clear that he doesn't like our front lawn, which features a mix of wildflowers and sunflowers, colorful garden flags, and a little free library. He seems to dislike our whole approach to making our yard a fun and welcoming space. Every time Paul complains, I tell him I don't care, and I mean it. I've even suggested that he might be happier living in a neighborhood with a homeowners association HOA that enforces strict rules and earthy color schemes. But Paul gets defensive and says he's lived in his house for 15 years and doesn't want to move. My response is simple okay then you'll just have to get used to seeing some color around here. Last weekend, I was installing pavers that my niece and I had painted together. They feature cute designs like ladybugs, turtles, and birds in bright colors. I love them, and my niece is thrilled to have contributed to my home's decor. But Paul came over again to complain, calling it an eyesore. With my niece present, I'd had enough of his negativity. I told him, it's time for you to mature and accept what I'm doing with my house. Stop worrying about it. Paul became even more agitated and told me I had no right to speak to him like that. He asked if I knew who I was talking to, implying he was someone important. I had had enough of his attitude, so I told him to just leave me alone and find something better to do with his time. I suggested that if he has so much free time to complain about my colorful house, maybe he should take up a hobby to keep himself occupied. Paul stormed off, calling me a nasty name. Meanwhile, my niece was trying to stifle her giggles. For the record, my family isn't easily offended and we don't make a big deal about swearing. I know some people still get worked up about it, especially around kids. But my niece is 15 and I'm sure she's heard worse. We're a laid-back family and don't stress about that kind of thing. Later, another neighbor came to me and said that Paul has been complaining about how disrespectfully I spoke to him. She acknowledged that Paul can be a nuisance but suggested that I should be kind to him since he's lived in the neighborhood for a long time. I'm not sure if I agree. Was telling him to get a life really that offensive? Was I in the wrong Ada for standing up to him like that?